Christmas. Hello, folks. This week, I'm joined by Ben, John, and Free as we dive into a host of hobby goodness from across the gaming industry. We're going to be looking at all the news, some Kickstarters, and, of course, our Indie of the Week. Now, sit back and relax, because your Christmas starts here. Hello, everybody, and a Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Many festive returns or anything else you happen to want to. My favourite is Japan. Merry gift-giving season. At least it's honest. Happy <laughs> Festag if you're in the old world. There we go. There Sorry. we are. <laughs> so, yeah, but you didn't expect this to crop up mm. on the 24th. Neither did we. But here we are. Our last of the year. Uh, we shall not be returning until the 14th of January. But fear not, while we are away, there's still plenty to have a look at kicking around on the site, and we'll be putting out some new things as well. So um, if you haven't already, you can come over to On Tabletop and check out things like the Wild West Exodus videos we've done for the Global Gunslinger League. Uh, we will also have the first of our battle reports for the starter set coming out over the Christmas break. So you can keep an eye out for that. Uh, and don't forget, if you are joining in and projecting as well, uh, if you tag it as Global Gunslinger League, you'll be in with a chance to win a prize. Uh, it will be announced when we come back on the 14th. We also have uh, the delightful silver bayonet, which you can see here on the homepage as well. So if you've missed those, apart from the unboxings, we've uh, a couple of Let's Plays, a solo and a 1v1 PvP game. And there's also a chance to win one of three starter sets from the silver bayonet as well. So a rule book and a unit for the British, Spanish and French nationalities. Um, but yeah. Other than that, over the next two weeks, we'll have our usual sort of painting guides and jerry cans and some Let's Plays. I believe the Assassin's Creed There will may still be videos yeah. in the new mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Not sure when. Anyway, keep an eye. We won't leave you totally abandoned. <laughs> we're very good like that. I, I know. feel anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but apart from the, the news that Christmas is coming, and I think most people are aware of that. <laughs> is it tomorrow? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it depends where you are in the world. Uh, if if yeah. you're in mainland Europe, it's it's right now. In fact, well, we're, yeah, we're probably interrupting your Christmas dinner. <laughs> At least uh, now, Dad. Yeah, like, if you remember the royal family, because they're all German, it's tonight as well. So <laughs> your highnesses, if you're watching, Harry probably is. I imagine Harry likes it. Uh, how's it going, big man? Are you treating you well? Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Nice stuff. Uh, but otherwise, let's crack on to the show. We have our usual barrel of stuff to get through, and let's kick it off, as always, with the Indie of the Week. And this week, Benjamino, who have you found for us? Uh, so I realised, I, I, I thought it was probably criminal that we hadn't even talked about these people uh, already, but, uh, and we have weirdly had a look at it, I think when, when Warren was looking at people with their todges out. Um, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, but not? yeah, that's very true. When you're not looking at todges and mushrooms, all the are they the same thing? In most cases, yes. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to be looking at heresy miniatures because mm. they have been around for yonks and have been doing amazing stuff uh, for many, many, many years mm. uh, in resin and metal and all sorts of different things for very for various um, genres as well. Um, so they've got fantasy and sci-fi and everything as well. Uh, but yes, and also big ball bags. <laughs> I was going to say something, and I was sitting there, and I was just looking at it, and I thought, no, stay quiet Perfect. on this one, really? free, stay quiet. Yeah. I mean, Andy's Andy's a bit of a legend. Andy went from yes. he he was a manager at Games Workshop, if memory serves, from the many many months ago, and um, he was at Warhammer Worldish before. I think it was really a Warhammer World. Uh, so obviously it's close to the studio and, and you spend a lot of time talking to people in the studio and he sort of just started sculpting there, but he was never a Games Workshop sculptor. 
Uh, he just sort of would occasionally get hints and tips from people uh, and then launched Heresy. Like you say, um, a, a variety of fantasy and science fiction things. Fantasy is where he started, and he started off with Big Boris, um, which I adore because he's he's Thrud the Barbarian, essentially, but with a slightly bigger head. Um, so I'm, I'm all for that. So that sort of has grown from there. And there's some weird and wacky stuff in here. Occasionally, people will sculpt for him. Um, so Kev's done a couple of bits in the past, and um, I think Steve Salah may have as well. They're listed when it's not an Andy sculpt. It'll be listed by the actual sculptor. But he's also done things like um, competitions where people have sketched monsters, and then he's made them. Nice. The Yeti was actually drawn by a guy who used to be a regular in Games Workshop Belfast whenever I was oh. there many, many, many moons ago. So we'll, we'll probably pass the Yeti at some point. Uh, but I really like it because it's great for unusual things. This yes. fellow, for yeah. example, is has worked its way into my Kings of War Ogre army as a, a oh, Berserker awesome. bully. Yeah. So it's yeah. one of the Berserker heroes. Rather than being a mohawked lunatic, he's just a guy smashing a massive table into somebody's head. Or he's picked up like someone's pervase. He's about to. Oh, <laughs> or something, um, yeah. oh no, is it? It's yeah. a table. Hang on. Let's that's see if brilliant. Can... Oh, yeah, there you go. Proper bar fight territory. Yeah, because yeah, I cool. mean, yeah. if you want to get rid of dwarves, that's the best way to do it, I find. Mm -hmm. Just repeatedly smack an oak table into their heads. Mm -hmm. um, for people who incorrectly play RPGs with miniatures, there's a lot of stuff in here that will do the job. <laughs> um, have a quick look at the Minotaur as well, since we're here. Because why would I not? Man being is a thing of beauty and has been since he appeared. Uh, I need to do it that way. Because hey. man being comes with options. Man being can have man in half. Ripped in half person or axes. Or axes. <laughs> Sir Roger the Lucky I love is not living up to that, his name. Yeah. <laughs> really not. <laughs> That's it's, really neat. I like that. That's great, isn't it? Yeah. It's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's a bit more interesting than mm -hmm. every Minotaur hero who's got a pair of axes in his hand. Although you yeah. can still yeah. do that if you want. But mm -hmm. I just, I just like to see humans being uh, ripped apart by <laughs> by giant, giant bull men. He's also a stonkingly big figure as well. Yeah, he looks quite big. The thing, oh, yeah. that, the thing that's always caught me about the stuff that heresy do, regardless of like the sculptor involved with it, is that a lot of it tends to be done as almost kind of, well, at least at this point anyway, done as almost kind of like one-off event style things. Mm -hmm. So, for example, he did the Kickstarter for the Dragon a couple of years ago now, was it, I think? Or was it last yeah. year? Oh, where the many, many months ago. Many years, where the, the Dragon was basically like this focal point, and that's become a massive thing for you know, heresy is like you get the dragon and it is a huge piece that the, we'll look the, at in a bit. Yeah, but, yeah. The, the dragon is is a thing. Uh, I believe the phrase yeah. is a statement piece. I, <laughs> I don't know if I would, I mean. Cannon fodder. As I, as I, yeah. It'll be tricky to fit it on a 75 mil square. Yeah. I will put it's, it like that. It's yeah. the kind of stuff you, you put in a fantasy battle and everybody aims all their bolt throwers at it. There you yeah. go. Not that people have many bolt throwers. <laughs> a, a statement piece or a murder weapon. Yes. Mm. Yeah. 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 Frontline. Drop it from a great height. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's like a brick. You could certainly do that. Yeah. Um, we'll not look at the Death Ball Ogres because they're coming next, mm -hmm. but I, I will. Let's just go ahead and have a look at Mr. Dragon. This is the at ultimate. least the alter, that's the ultimate head version. Yeah. But, yeah. but that, this will give people a good idea of size. Nice. Compared that's, to a regular human ish. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. huge. That's dragon size. Hooray. Yep. Go nod the Slayer. Mm. It's almost <laughs> like somebody's channeled their inner Warren there. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I would have said it could have been Warren, except it's painted. <laughs> so, and it's clothed. Yep. Oh, it's, well, ah, it's right, yeah. uh, if I do this, so seeing head oh. for scale, you can get wow. a sort of idea. It's not a small not creature by any any means. Um, they very rarely appear these days. I think he had some that maybe had slight imperfections that were mm -hmm. still going, but it, it's one of these models that's so big it couldn't be 
really it couldn't even be manufactured let's be brutally honest that the fact that he did it why he needed the was, kickstarter <laughs> was, was insanity yeah. uh, the fact that it stuck around for so long yeah. um was virtue of itself mm. uh being such a nice sculpt but um but boris yeah this is, the, sorry go on jerry no i was just gonna say that this is the iconic character mm. this is this is your uh I suppose when I think of heresy, I think of Big Boris in some fashion. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, I believe there's actually a separate Boris page where we can just see all the Boris eyes. Oh, I think there is actually, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I have to go and have a wee butchers for that yeah. because it's. Has he got arseless chaps on there, Boris? Um, yes, he does. Yeah. He's, also, he's got a cod piece on. <laughs> if we're going to the Boris page, you're going to see a lot more of Boris. Than that. Oh, wow. well, so yeah. it's, it's thankfully. Uh, I suppose censored. Yeah. Uh, but so. uh, there was the one of the pages that you bought up. Uh, for example, you, you know, you saw the we saw the goblin arches that you were yes. looking at before. Like this is the kind of stuff that I think is really nice about the heresy page. Is that if you are doing D and D or something like that, mm. you pick up packs like that. Suddenly, you've got your set of very evocative and all as you can see individual goblin arches that you could use in your dungeon games or whatever. Oh, or if you're yeah. making war bands for like typical fantasy style skirmish games or something these are like perfectly great for these kind of things like you you pick these up throw them in and suddenly you've got a really unique looking set of miniatures that also then work alongside plenty of other ranges that are out there yeah because they're all around that 28 to 32 millimeter scale in that those heroic proportions mm -hmm. and stuff like i mean those are great additional sort of like nurgle troops or something yeah. you want to or if you're playing rain and hell rain or, and hell oh yeah. yeah if you're a fan of constantine Actually, remember yeah. the film Constantine, yeah. and whenever he yeah. was in hell, none of them had top halves of their heads. Mm -hmm. There are alternative heads that are missing the no top way. half of the cranium, and they just look like the Constantine screaming lunatics. Very cool. Oh, um, wow, that's cool. Which, you know, look amazing. Mm -hmm. I think it might be them because I can't oh. see a cranium on them. Has he got a picture of the headless wonders? <laughs> yes. Oh, there yeah, they do. Yeah. You're right. So, and I mean, that as a look. The first time I've seen it in um, Constantine, it was like, oh, that's different. Yeah. I didn't think anybody would ever actually go the whole hog and make one. But, you know, why not? I mean, they're demonic anyway. For sure. <laughs> uh, anything else we want to have a look at before we drift away from the <sighs> fantasy? Evil bag puss, I suppose, because it's me. <laughs> yes. I, I think I'd, I'd have to do that. It's worth. To, uh, have we got the fantasy tab still open? If we go, if we go back. Oh to, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. Go, just go back to fantasy miniatures, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously the dragon there. <laughs> <laughs> but because uh, there's like, oh. I think it was the centaurs are pretty cool. Yeah, uh, centaurs are lovely. And uh, the like elfy, elfy folk. <laughs> the oh, elfy elf. folk. Oh. I'm pretty sure that's the one done by Steve. Might be. Steve. Yeah. Evil yeah. villains, aren't they? And obviously they've got they've got a fair amount of demons and villains and all sorts of different things as well. Ah, uh, uh, Steve Buddle. I was so close. I knew it was a Steve, but I couldn't remember which Steve. Uh, it's the kind of stuff that like fits in really nicely with a lot of the um I'd say not classic, but sort of like the standard Reaper range. Like mm -hmm. I think a lot of this matches up quite nicely with that. So if you've got miniatures yeah. perhaps from that, uh, I think these are a really good sort of shoe in alongside those um I like, it's especially classic, if you've got a lot of the sort of creep of black stuff so. yes yeah, yeah yeah and because of that it doesn't yeah. matter the game you're playing it's up mm. to you and your paint style i mean yeah. that could easily be a wood elf or a high elf or a dark mm -hmm. elf yeah uh, if you're playing fantasy or yeah you know whatever it happens to be like, sylvan kin like nowadays obviously if you saw a miniature like that that miniature would probably have patterning stuff worked into the cloak would have yeah. or there'd be like stitching on the leather and all that kind of thing and that's great and i like that kind of thing it's great if you're working with washes and things that can pull nice pull things out really nicely and easily mm -hmm. but i found like there being a really nice thing in just painting miniatures where as you say you do have just these clean lines like yeah. i've been working through a whole bunch of old school eldar at the moment and there's been it's been really nice looking at those oh, miniatures nice. and being like these are things that are just easily identifiable via block colors, like as you see there, yeah. that you can be like, boom, 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 makes a statement. You know exactly what it is on the tabletop. Not too much fussing around and stuff. So, so yeah. I'll have to open 
the Dragon. The dragon. <laughs> Even though people probably can't get their hands on it, unless we're about to be surprised here. But um, <laughs> there, there are imperfect casts where you're okay. saving 43% because it's, I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, and I just have to open it, open it, open it. I would like the larger image. There piece. we go. We can see it alongside a piece of A4 paper, <laughs> or just a big piece of paper, anyway. But, uh, oh, that's, that's a big boy. Well, yeah. There you go. You can see a pack of sweets to the, to the ah, side. Ah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Your standard reference <laughs> tunes. I'm going to say, <laughs> uh, if it's any help, these white things on the green stuff well, on the ground, go, yeah. they're one yeah. centimeter. Mm -hmm. Although, sure, go with your pack of sweets a million miles away. <laughs> Works for me, man. Hey, look, I work with what I got, right? Okay, so. Someone said that to me the other day. They said a ridiculous length. And I said, how many cats is that? <laughs> I did see somebody uh, the very measuring their cats, cat yeah. in cat Thomas scale. the Tank Engine toys. <laughs> I was like, it was one Thomas the Tank Engine toy when it was a kitten, and it's now eight Thomas the Tank Engine toys log as, enough, a, yeah. as a fully grown cat. You're going, okay. Cat to scale. But I mean, like I say, that, I'm not sure what size base that is underneath that ring base. Oh, yeah. was, let's say it's 100 mil. Was yeah. he on the, he was on it the seems base. seems drastically but, undersized. For sure. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 so it's about yeah so 11 12 so 100 100 mil round lip base mm. so you probably could fit it on a 75 mil for kings of war mm. anyway totally, jerry needs to buy an imperfect uh, dragon so mm. just, just just put it on one of the citadel ovals yeah yeah <laughs> like the, the the big ones since yeah. they're doing dragons again yeah they are doing dragons again but yeah it's a that's like you know christmas time of year or for people on a budget evil bagpuss <laughs> he was sad old cloth cat. Oh yeah. wow, that's fantastic! But Emily loved him, uh, and you know, for he tore my friend's face like, off, but I still love him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, what evil bagpuss tears your friend's face off? The magnificent musical mouse organ kicks in, and they go, "We will mend him. We will fix him. We will be more on you." <laughs> and then they come and stitch the face back on. Oh, that's terrifying! Because they're evil. Yeah, everything in bagpuss. Oh wow, it's even uh, even painted by a celebrity, Matt Lucas. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> well, you know, fair to middling. I would have said. Mm. Uh, I'm going to drop into Big Boris, and then we'll, well, we'll have a look at the centaurs, and then we'll drop into Boris. Mm. Yeah, because there is only a pair of centaurs to look at. Yeah, I do appreciate. That. I like a good centaur. Mm. Everybody likes a good centaur, and they're also big. So <laughs> yeah, they're impressive looking. It uh, has a very sort of tribal feel as well. Mm, um, nice pose. Yeah. I've seen a few people do elves like this where they could be uh, Native Westphalia American. Did it, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, they're not alone. Somebody else has done it whose name escapes me. It'll come back later on. I'll suddenly shut out in the middle of the news. But yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice to see that sort of thing because you, sometimes you see centaurs and they're like wearing Greek armor and it's okay if you've got a big Greek army. You're going, yeah. well, fair enough. But... Are they likely to craft something like that themselves? No. Whereas I think, you know, a few feathers and a bit of leather and away you go. Absolutely. In fact, even, you know, leather, is that just their, maybe that's their forefathers. <laughs> I was going to say that. It's a tribal thing. to use leather. <laughs> I wear father... my father's skin. Yeah. <laughs> I use him as my shield. What did your father leave you in his death? His skin. <laughs> I, can't in see, I can't see centaurs and not see the the skeleton diagrams of the two rib cages and stuff. It just oh, it freaks yeah. me out. The, the better one is foals can walk after like half an hour after they're born, whereas babies can't hold their own heads up for like the first eight months, and it's just a floppy little yeah. baby yeah. on top of the foal running around. Yeah, it's great. Just in time for Christmas. <laughs> This one's another one by uh, Steve, mm -hmm. I think. Lady it's, Centaur. Yeah. Let's open that one. No, let's open that. I know this freaks people out whenever I do it, and they go, oh, it's a million tabs open. <laughs> Somebody counted them one day. I don't care. People, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The tabs are there until I need the tabs to go away. <laughs> but again, yeah, just like really nice alternative adventures or yeah. characters I agree. for bands and stuff. So, yeah, really cool. It's just a different way of doing it. Mm. Right, the Boris, and then we'll go on to look at some sci-fi, I think. <sighs> Here is Big Boris. 
I mean, he's a Boris a has got a lot of outfit, outfits and considering he's most comfortable in his loincloth. Yeah. Go on, Boris. So this is the <laughs> original the OG. Mark one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and Boris hasn't really changed a huge amount over time. Just how he sculpted changes. Um, Went to the gym a lot more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was which is interesting. Up. It means you can also see where Andy's sculpting has developed throughout the years, just by buying out Boris every time he releases one. That's nice. But I mean, it's you know, classic old school barbarian. Uh, what more can we say? He's bald. He's got muscles on his muscles. And he's got a ridiculous axe. He's perfect. Yeah. Um, but if so, you want more, you have a whole variety from Chaos Boris, a Mark I and a Mark II, uh, through to Kev's nude and not nude versions. <laughs> uh, and then the Dreadball ones, uh, or Death Ball. Let's have a quick look. That was the it. one I painted for Warren, wasn't it? No, the well, one, yes, one yeah, the, the nude version would be, yeah, I imagine yeah. almost undoubtedly is. Yeah. You do such, oh, such well, good that's work, John. Great. <laughs> but I mean, you know, again, lamping somebody and anybody who used to read White Dwarf when Thrud was a thing, uh, mm. having Thrud as a referee in a Blood Bowl game is almost undoubtedly going to end the same way with all the players on the pitch being killed by the referee. <laughs> Big Red Boris card. is very much, he's very much the Stone Cold Steve Austin of, uh, of heresy miniatures. He just oh, arrives so. and then just does people like a kepper. Uh, wow. Do that. Santa uh, Boris. Yes, we have a look at Santa Boris. Uh, this that's the safe for work version. That's uh, the safe, yeah. yeah, he is. Okay. Um, knobs are good. <laughs> he is correct. This one before I because I'm I'm glad that there is a censorship on the area. I just mm. made a point of thinking how big his hands were. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want uh, a, a more suitable for work, no, it has to be that. There is. The job's a good and Kev White version <laughs> with loincloth. And I mean, he's a happy man being all happy. Yeah. Being his best life. Oh, Having, yeah. as you Quite say, clearly. his best life. I may have already opened these, but let's open them again. Here is Fallen Boris. Ah, oh, that's great. Quite that's, that's chaosy. Yeah. I quite like him. And then it's the, it's the night, nightmare in Siegfried of, uh, <laughs> of heresy, yeah. and then revisited um, fifteen years later. Oh, yeah, wow, yeah. Oh God, I, I can't believe that two thousand and two is that long ago. But there we go. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. And at that point, he becomes oh. a bit more spectacular. He, he got an upgrade. He did. Mm. Uh, mm. I think he also has the alternate head. So he can have a helmet rather than actually be demonically horned, I think. Where's our? There's our actual pieces. Dun, dun, I mean, I'd like to see someone head. just make a war band themed around Hamlet Boris, head. and it's yeah. like it's Boris from all the various dimensions that have come together <laughs> into the Spider Verse, only yeah. into the Boris, <laughs> into the Boris Verse. That's great. Yeah. It, it would certainly be a way to go. Yeah. I have to say that. Um, apart from our fantasy, absurd we also, fantasy miniatures. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I mean that was only, I want to say, the first page and a bit out of about mm. four pages. Uh, there's also sci-fi as well. Yes. Um, so let's probably kill a few tabs here. <laughs> Keep <laughs> alive. Make them suffer, Jerry. Maybe one. Uh, it's it's not that. I'm just looking at a row of skulls on the top now. And even I'm having difficulty working out who is who <laughs> from that. Uh, but the sci-fi, again, is similar in that you can kind of go nuts um, and use them for other games. And when he started sculpting these, there weren't really a huge amount of other games in town. Over the past couple of years, we've seen quite a few of system agnostic ones pop up where these things become a lot more useful. Uh, so the likes of Stargrave, where you have... Um, various troopers and mercenaries um, that 
can be fielded as part of your crew or can come up against you. Uh, and these are a gorgeous set of sort of generic sci-fi types. Uh, trooper with support weapon and... Yeah. It's not open. Demolition Man. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Not him. But I mean, look, look at that. I mean, that's going to make a mess of anybody coming towards uh, yeah. you, which is always good. And not Demolition Man. <laughs> He's he's well, you know, he's got that beret and uh, big scar down his face, so he's he's probably one of those evil dictators mm, get in space. But actually, just throws that open there. We'll have a look at some of these. These are nice, and I've always looked at them going. If I had a a, a system that I needed generic troopers for, I'd probably pick these up. Um, but I hadn't really in the past. However. I didn't yeah. pick up the full sci-fi collection of <sighs> the gangs. They did that... all the kind of like alternative necromander stuff, didn't they? So, well, yeah. he did one, and he did it in a big way. So Delac, oh, the Delac, for, yeah, yeah. For yeah, fans of bold and trench coats. Um, <laughs> did all they became more weird and spindly as they are now? But <laughs> yeah. well, I think they were always meant to be weird and spindly. He just chose not to go that way because. Well. It, it's better if they don't. Um, <laughs> and you got spectacular ah. stuff like this. I mean, nice. I'm not saying he was sculpting these around about the same time the Matrix came out. <laughs> but what I will say is there was a film that came out around about the same time that was very big. Nobody can tell you what it is, but you have to find out for yourself. Yes. Uh, but this, when I seen this set, I had to pick them up. Uh, because I had ah. I had high hopes of playing Necro again and using my Delax. And maybe someday when the uh, things settle down and the club reopens, I will do this thing. Mm. But there's some really beautiful touches on them, like the Batman belt buckles and the quilting. There's a lot of the Batman belt buckles. And if anybody's read the Dark Knight series, there is a gang who essentially idolize Batman, who dress not dissimilar oh. to this, bald head. And sometimes they have... Um, face paint of the bat symbol on so I, I quite appreciate that little touch and if you want to play it in the imperium you just go ah it's not a bat symbol at all it's it's it's, it's an eagle uh, but it did give you all the options so if you wanted you know flamer nice. or missile launcher or plasma cannon or whatever it happened to be they're all there i quite like the missile launcher if i can find him um because he's a the dude with the plasma cannon as well, that's just always immense. I, I love that guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, where are you, Missa? Yes. Oh, smoking a tab. Uh, there he is. So, I mean, there's Painless Joe with yeah. plasma cannon with these two massive orbs of plasma generating goodness wow, on it. Oh, yeah. Don't roll a one. Oh, man. Tiger. I just love him. Tiny's great. Tiny, Tiny's awesome. So what do you do? Stand at the back and fire things far away? Yes. You're going to run up there and capture that objective? No. It's not what I'm here for. I like standing here. Yeah. Uh, standing still. Yeah. Standing still is always good. This guy is just gorgeous. It's oh, just a really wow. nice sentry model. You know, yes, he's a gagger. Yes, he's got bolter or auto gun or whatever you happen to want it to be for your game uh but he's also just standing there having a puff maybe really, playing really a, nice a, a little bit more of a sort of narrative story yeah. or something just have one of those wandering around yeah. or something yeah you know yeah. and the the gang set itself is i mean that's 90 quid at the moment there's 25 percent off nice um i would like to see that as a larger image please <laughs> So, I mean, you can get that for 90 quid. 25 figures, yeah, yeah, exactly. And you've got your dual pistol running, ah. folk waving, you've got people drawing katanas. Uh, you've just got a lot of cool-looking dudes, and they do fit into the necro sort of juve, ganger, heavy, and, and leader. Uh, you can easily make two or three gangs out of it. They match up incredibly well to the old-school Delac models as well. Oh, yeah. Like... There's, there's very little to tell them apart in many regards because I've got a few of the old Delac models that I use for my my Inquisitor stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, there are also 
quick jump through some of these. Nice. We have the inspectors and other government types. Again, great for the likes of Stargrave, five yeah. power sex, that sort of thing, where you've got maybe a narrative driven game. You don't need everybody to have a gun all the time. Seven T V um, as well. Good for Seven T V, ah. yeah. So you know, trying to get through customs or get your ship prepared and just a lot of annoying bureaucrats getting in your now way. Now you must yeah. fight the red tape. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Fill out all the admin. And yeah. the smugglers and other anti-heroes are something that Heresy does occasionally. You may spot a few of you these. You may be familiar. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, that's not, not Lulu. Elemental. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> not, not Lulu. Yep. Um, we also have a captain who it may, or may to not be called Nathan. <laughs> yeah, who may or may not have uh, fought in a, a war. <laughs> Delightful brown coat. In well, that's all right. Valley. <laughs> his uh, his soul will be saved because mm. he's uh, got a reverend with him. Ah, oh, everyone needs a reverend on ship. A second head with the hair would have been great. <laughs> I'm just saying, Andy, yeah. if you're watching, agreed. Uh, you can always go back to that one. Uh, sure. But apart from our smugglers, and there is a Dallas Corbin esque fella in there as well. There he is, lurking at the bottom, the major. Um, but if I come back to our scientists and civilians, again, potential to look somewhat familiar to people. So, a girl in some clothes. <laughs> Tom. When, he, when he's making, yeah. It's Good just, SEO, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only some clothes. Mm. Mr. Anderton. Anderton? Ah. Yeah. Edward Ar Arterton. 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 That's there a is. big old, probably, Desert Eagle. That's it's, quite a big it's, gun, it's yeah. massive. However, maybe you're playing a 7 TV-like game and he ah. wouldn't be using a weapon because it's, you know not what they do on that TV show. <laughs> and maybe your uh, your doctor, I uh, don't know what sort of name would give him, let's just call him Doctor Whom, would be up against... <laughs> Doctor what? <laughs> Doctor where? <laughs> up against that. Uh, and, you know, Doctor what may require a companion of some description that, as well. A girl in some maybe, she, maybe she'd be a bit more ginger. Mm. Let's call her... Jessica Lake. Jessica Lake's a great <laughs> name. <for her>. Yeah. <laughs> and they can have their own tiny DO6 security oh. Android. Because, mm. you know, why would you not? Great stuff. Ah, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's a thing of gorgeousness, this, this, this. That's um, adorable. Yeah. And obviously, being a fan of the only proper uh, doctor, I like to see my. <laughs> Canine like droids running about the place. <laughs> so, but yeah, a um, whole host of stuff in the sci fi world as well. We'd already sort of touched on it that there is Death Ball because we'd seen Boris lamping people. Uh, yeah. Um, but the, the big one for this is the Death Ball Ogres, uh, which I think is probably one of the nicest ogre teams for your fantasy football games that you'll be able to lay your hands on because they're uh, particularly smashy. Not just, they haven't just gone for the idea that they'll, they're just big fat. They've gone, <laughs> they've gone for the idea, no, no, no. these guys are going to crush you. Yeah. <laughs> these guys are ripped. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what happens when you have to run a lot. You know, <laughs> eventually all the fat gets burned off. Yeah. They're uh, a big chunky set of Hefty resin. Mm. I could have used them for every one of the three ogres I had to hire for my Ostland Ogres Blood Bowl team ah. because the first two died. <laughs> first oh, one died in the first match. Now, obviously, that's quite expensive as an ogre in the first match, but he died. Second one spent three games bringing him back, you know, hired another one. He died. <laughs> so, not there much we go. Luck. There's not the luck. three ogres of the Ostland Ogres. Yeah. <laughs> and, and again, you can mix and match to a certain extent, but I quite like the fact he's got knuckle dusters with pain on them, oh. written, <laughs> written backwards, so when he plants somebody, it will just be imprinted <laughs> on their foreheads. That's great. Yeah. It's like a 
his own version of branding, isn't it? Yeah. While we're here at the big guys, um, the dragon wheat. is not the only. Mucklewheat is a giant. Wow. Giant. That's huge. Oh, yep. yes. Yes, yes, it is. And I big, feel... Big, chunky resin. Yeah. That must weigh some. Oh, there you go. Wow. It's, uh, I think that may be a night he's eating. <laughs> So you should always take your food out of the can first, though, Mucklewheat. It's got, it's got <laughs> all the vital iron that he needs to keep his body going. Yeah. It's the... less than a kilo. Oh, that's not awful. No. So it comes in six parts. And there yeah. are three of them in stock if you want one. So. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, just... It's only 74 quid. Oh. I mean, bargain. Absurdly <laughs> huge. <laughs> that's just massive. Could be. Could be that he's not happy with being eaten. He does seem to be trying to suggest that he doesn't eat him. Mm. Mm. Some people just don't realise. They should be glad. Circle of life. Glad, you know, there are people out there. Mold are currently being remade. You can still order him. Oh, that was in January 2020. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, the mold's been remade. Which is why why there are muckle wheats on the site. It's oh, Jerry in another one of his forms. <laughs> Jerry through the ages. Yeah. He's not quite as fat as I am. <laughs> but he's getting there. Anyway, yeah, it's a big guy's <laughs> death ball. Some and, really uh, fun things to go and check out. Yeah. Absolutely. And since it is Christmas, there is <gasps> one other one mm-hmm. that we can't leave without talking about, and that is the special Christmas Boris. Oh, this is fab. Yeah. So if you're still looking for a Christmassy miniature, <sighs> definitely go and check out Santa Boris. I love that he come, he's got the big cane with a nail. With a nail through it, yeah. <laughs> I just love how he's still got his legs out, bless him. He's got he's made a lot oh. of effort to keep warm, but don't worry. He's got his legs out. Classic Boris. Yeah. You don't don't need to cover everything up all the time. It seems like an excessive waste. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so there we have it. Uh, heresy miniatures. A fantastic range uh, and well worth checking out because you're never quite sure what he's up to oh actually i do know one thing he's up to and i really can't leave without talking about this oh yes yeah um <laughs> because he's been working on and off for the past mm, wee while shall we say on a prospective kickstarter because he wants mm. to do a set of plastic fantasy skeletons um and to do that because he's still old school in his sculpting he's sculpting them in three apps and then they're going to be if the kickstarter is successful pantograph reduced down by the likes of renedra somebody like that i imagine um which means there are resin casts in a limited number available of these three up sculpts let me see where they live so these are big, bigly. Some of them are sort of standard. Um, I'll just open the images, actually, is the easiest way. So you've got your generic skeleton, because this is the plan to make, you know, multi-part skeletons. Mm-hmm. So Skelly Bob, Sword and Board, Skelly Bob with uh, Scythe. Very uh, because, hero quest. <laughs> yeah, because Andy is Andy and can't leave well enough alone. He was like, um, let's try some more. <laughs> he started doing other things yeah. like, you know, hair rippling in the breeze. Ah. Somebody went, well, why not make him like pure metal? So he went ahead and made a guitar and metal yes, arm. Bird. Someone yeah. needs yeah. to paint that like Trooper. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That would it, look it's great. It's very doable. <laughs> There's also a couple of uh, sort of more barbarous ones. So again, That's cool. looks like he's gone full Conan. Mm. And there's one that's kind of dragging Meow Meow with him across the floor. Uh, there was one other classic barbarian, but unfortunately he sold out. But fortunately I own him, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, the future's bright for the future is, yes. the skeleton stuff. Yeah. Oh, wow. He just looks so happy. He's he so happy to be a skeleton. Um, well worth following Andy and Heresy Miniatures on Face page because he's been working on a... A lot of the previews go up there, yeah. Um, I want to say a magician 
skeleton, a mage skeleton. It's difficult to tell. However, there's an extravagant cloak and he is floating off the floor like uh, Stephen Strange, um, but dead. Uh, so yeah, it'll be fascinating to see. Hopefully he gets them done when it comes to Kickstarter uh, and then I can get some plastic skellies. Uh, but it's well worth grabbing those big three ups, either as just as a modeling project or I'll find some way to shoehorn them into a game somewhere as an undead <laughs> giant um, because you can't stop me. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> anyway, Heresy Miniatures. Check them out, and we shall be right back with some news after this. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh you love. It's the m News. <laughs> so yeah, back with the last little bit of news uh, for 2021 before mm -hmm. we all go off on a holiday but there is still also things to talk about as Jerry's mentioned so yes uh, we're kicking things off a little bit of forward thinking in fact there's two news items here that are all about forward thinking so oh, wow. we have uh, some news from Arcom because they are going to be heading back to Kickstarter in January uh, on the 11th as you can see there mm -hmm. um, for their uh, another one of their Rampart um, modular terrain Kickstarter projects uh, this is the train that you will have seen uh, Jerry and uh, and Warren and the rest of the team working on and building up to make some fantastic 40k tables and stuff that we use for our hobby weekend back in the annals of time when events were allowed. Um, this is again sort of building on what they've done previous to this. So we have um, uh, two sort of, well, three, I guess, sci-fi variants for you to play around with, uh, with some new bits and pieces starting to the mix as well, alongside uh, some fantasy options as well with their kind of like lost Aztec, Lizard Man style ruins as well at the same time. Um, one of the big things about their terrain uh, is that it is incredibly modular. So their sort of focus is on the idea of like, you have a whole bunch of different sort of wall sections and floor sections, and they can all be bolted together without using glue uh, in order to make the different designs that you see here. And then to build on top of that, you've also got things like lights and panels and oh, nice. all sorts of different things that you can then plug into the gaps. So as you can see there on some of those wall sections, you've got the little plugs on the side for how it all connects together with the corner pillars. But then you have the little plugs that go into the side so you can put on things like lights and signs and all kinds of things like that. So nice. you can really approach this as almost like a little Lego set of plastic terrain mm. uh, that you all paint up individually and then can just bosh together however you feel like, uh, which makes it incredibly good for storage, which is one of the main things. <laughs> because, yeah, you know, you that's one of the massive away problems. If you need to. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, and as I say, they've, they've, they've really focused on the idea of sort of developing and building on um, some of their pass kits and also bringing some new ones in there as well. So there's going to be a lot for you to dive into and have a look at. Um, all of them come in and they're kind of like, uh, there's like bundles that they're doing for like, I think it's under 100 mm -hmm. uh, euros, dollars, one of the two. Think euros, uh, I think. Euros, because uh, they are a European company, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, so you're able to dive in and check those out and uh, and effectively get a, a, a big battlefield and a box worth of terrain um, for you to tinker with and play around with. One of the nice things they're doing with it as well is that they're, they're including a lot more um, stuff for height in, in terrain. Yeah. So there's lots of staircases and different floor sections, uh, whereas, whereas with some of the previous stuff we did, we had to kind of like bodge a, lot, a bit of that and sort of build different sections in order to get the height and things, but they're sort of throwing in there as well, which is really cool. They're also doing um, some new stuff in terms of miniatures as well. Um, so if you are interested in picking up some miniatures to go alongside this, one of the uh, additional things you can pick up beyond the terrain is their sort of um, city defenders range, as you see there. So um, you can see a selection of the different troops that they've worked on already. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of these people will remember from when they were looking at Star Side, I think it was called, uh, mm -hmm. where they were sort of trying to bring that to the, the tabletop. Now's a chance to pick up some of the miniatures sort of work alongside that. Uh, this is their kind of like all-female um, sort of Imperial Guard-esque force, which I think is really cool. Um, but I get some very heavy dust vibes off a lot of this as well, yeah. especially in the the, um, the styling of them and the poses. <laughs> I get some very I, heavy Dolph Lundgren vibes off them. Well, yes. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren was in an amazing film called Sniper, where I don't think he ever used a Barrett on a bipod <laughs> in the entire film. He was constantly Why shooting not, it yeah. from the hip or doing wow. barrel rolls across the floor. Nice. Um, uh, and it was, I was, Just blown, it was blown away. Yeah, which yeah. is exactly how people expect to use a barrel. Yeah. Without doubt. 
but yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. They're going to do cavalry and um, character pieces and all sorts of different things. They have also um, listed things like that. They are very cool. I like that. Mm. Sort of like bionic style horses. Mm. Very nice. These are some of my favorite. The Ubermen. I think they're really cool. Sort yeah. of like your Ogryn types. Uh, like one of them's got the front of a car. Yes. <laughs> or a truck that they're using as a shield. I think it's pretty cool. And then you've got the guy with the very lovely uh, set of facial hair there. Um, it's rocking around. Amazing tash. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See him in so, sort of like Necromunda or something, sort of stomping around, maybe alongside some Palanite enforcers that have hired oh. a bigger, even bigger gun or something. Um, there, you also, also have seen there was a, a tank mm-hmm. in the, the first image yeah. for this. Uh, that Wolverine is going to be one of the stretch goals um, that they're going nice. to look to unlock during the campaign. So they do have plans to be in the vehicle. Alone. And if it's like anything like any of the stuff that Arkham have done in the past, uh, this is. No doubt, going to garner a lot of attention when it comes mm. comes comes to the tabletop, and uh, we'll talk about it when we're back. And the Kickstarter is all live, and they've added yeah. some more stuff in. So, so. If, if you can't wait, or if you missed out um, on the Dungeons and Lasers set, which was their last Kickstarter, I want to say, um, think, which, think, yeah. which got used kind of for um, Warren used it for the Hero Quest board, his Hero Quest yeah. board, and his uh, his diorama he was working on for the house. Nice. Um, it's just come to retail. Uh, so I know in the UK, North Star have just received theirs. Uh, so if you're after that, that's that's a more standard dungeon crawl setup. Um, but there's also some magnificent looking dragons in that as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm. I, I want to say there was like seven, maybe eight different mm. types of dragons. All, even an alien queen dragon. and also All <laughs> hard plastic kits as well. So, um, yeah, mm-hmm. it's lovely stuff there if you're... Uh, interested in getting stuff sooner rather than later or if you missed out in ramparts keep an eye for that i'm mm-hmm. sure we'll be talking about it more when it goes live anyway yep. mm-hmm. in 2022 mm-hmm. who's next uh so next up we're moving to the realm of the historical with victrix um so as people will know if they've been following us in the weekend uh, victrix have done a whole bunch of stuff over the last year or so building additional plastic kits and all sorts of different things for various periods of history mm-hmm. um while they are intending to essentially bolster each of those different eras with even more miniatures as we move into 2022 nice uh so they did sort of like a little bit of a roundup of what they've got coming so when it comes to the napoleonic side of things you'll see some of the images there showing off the artwork of what's coming up i'm sure the buffs in the audience have already worked out exactly what is coming Mm. but um so there's gonna gonna be french dragoons french chasseurs à cheval oh Mm. i love the sound of that and also (laughs) british heavy dragoons as well Uh, so they're going to be rocking everything out for anybody who's diving into napoleonics in 28 mil Mm. having fun with that as is the way with a lot of stuff that victrix do lots of little bits and pieces in these kits that allow you to make really detailed and interesting troops they work very very nicely alongside obviously their own plastic troops but also things from the uh ranges from the likes of perry and that as well so they're a nice fit for that as uh full of dynamism with their kits as well which is really nice uh on the slightly more dark dark age side of things mm-hmm. um so going back in time uh they're going to be working on some new northern cavalry as you can see represented up there in the uh the top left they're also gonna, yeah so you can play out uh hastings to your heart's content yeah yeah they're also going to be including the dark age archers again so you can play out hastings to your heart's content <laughs> <laughs> well uh, the dark age archers are generic set for them yes so they should um, which is nice yeah. mm-hmm. so you you really can't just chuck them in everywhere and anywhere yeah. you've also then got uh their sort of look at arthurian um ranges so they're going to be looking at the very late the latter stages of the, of the of the roman empire with the romano british and their late roman set so if you're eager to play out arturus's fights against the invading Saxons, then you can do that as well. Uh, you're also going to be able to get your hands on a new plastic set of Goths at the same time too. Mm-hmm. So if you want to play as the invading forces looking to sack what is left of the Roman Empire, you can dive in and have fun with that. Well, so if you want to go east and, and move your Roman yeah. capital to uh, Byzantium. Very true. You, yeah. you use these as busies mm-hmm. quite happily. Mm-hmm. And really, really nice staff sling there which you oh, rarely yeah. see in that's nice, form, isn't it? Uh, when you need a bit more range on your sling 
But yeah, again, very detailed kits. If anyone's picked up any of the Bitrix stuff or watched any of our unboxings, they have lots of bits and pieces for you to play around with and have fun with. Sometimes slightly complicated <laughs> assembly <laughs> instructions, but yep. other than that, uh, very good. Well, I tell you what won't be complicated, the assembly for these. Well, yes. Uh, it's fairly easy to bodge these together, I would imagine. But uh, just I, I put these in just to please just to please John. <laughs> uh, something to look at. Yeah. So, uh, this is the uh, development of their 12 millimeter range. Um, Mm -hmm. which has already got a lot of stuff in there. If, yeah. if you, if, if, In particular, if you collect um, the Allies in terms of the US and the Germans, they have loads of tanks, loads of infantry to play around with. But, and I'm just going to whiz through this list, mm. <laughs> there is going to be an M10 Wolverine, a mid-war Panzer IV variant, a Sherman M4A1 variant, well, lots of Sherman M4A1 variants, a priest, Puma armoured car, Russian infantry, including tank riders, uh, a T-34-76 variant, T-34-85s, SU-76s, a Lloyd carrier, Falsham Jaeger infantry, which we looked at um, a couple of weeks ago in, mm -hmm. in our news section over on the yep. website, and also a PAC-40 as well, which comes with its own infantry set. Um, and as they added as a special thing at the end, there's also going to be an SD-11 tractor, because why not? Um, but they are they are fully... Uh, embracing this 12 millimeter range and building on it with a whole bunch of, of, of vehicles that I think uh, a lot of World War II fans are going to have fun with. Think, sure. so. There'll be some unboxings coming for the Germans, uh, Infantry and Panther um, mm -hmm. in the new year because I've already I've already had a look at those and, and unboxed mm -hmm. them. And I have to say the Infantry, especially, you can see there um, the sort of level of detail and also amount of uh, poses, poses kind of and yeah. weaponry you have uh that's obviously russians towing their maximum gun look these ones actually have guns look how lucky they are uh, <laughs> i want to say there's we're all on the front line <laughs> like 186 i think germans in the set so it's literally you know you're one and done you're you're pretty much if you're yeah. playing at that scale as well you're you're probably going to be playing um large level game so well beyond company uh so it's it's really nice to have the access to that obviously the 12 mil has freaked people out oh they freaked them out <laughs> when they announced it originally and then they, when they released it and it was still 12 mil it still freaked them out uh, <laughs> it's worth pointing out they only put 12 mil on it because people seem to get confused when you put scales on things i mean i know um, i do <laughs> so, so it's it's actually one 144th uh, of which there are quite a lot of model companies out there doing kits already uh, in any of scale. games you can use it for as well so. yeah uh, well most uh, a lot of um the world war ii games out there are not scale dependent uh so your your ground scale is whatever you make it um whatever you're playing and especially in that sort of size but it means you can do things like put a um railway cannon on the tabletop uh, which is achievable without having to pay a ridiculous price. I, I yeah. can pick up a coral for like a tenner. That's a big mm -hmm. hunking piece of, of scenario right there. If uh, people are you know that far beyond or pushing on to try and take out a, a railway gun. Um, and I just like seeing the, the spectacle of, of full forces, sort of divisional level, just being pummeled on either side of the, the tabletop. So yeah, I like the 144th. Yeah. Hopefully we'll see a lot more of this. Mm -hmm. as i say in the new year mm -hmm. and uh as one of the other things as well it's like people are like well it doesn't match with what i was thinking of and i was like well they're gonna do everything so so i think <laughs> you'll be all right so <laughs> they are going to do everything and, yeah. like i say i mean if, if you yeah. just google one to one hundred, you'll be able to find something you'll though, find yeah they exist dozens of companies that's fezda's range already is, is massively massive you can even um, get like mouse and e100 at that scale you can get a mouse and, yeah there's there we I, go. I think it's yeah. like tacom do one as well uh yeah tacom because, do them because they do a box set that is the rat with two mouse tanks in it if you want to go completely weird world war yeah. um <laughs> that's a thing um <laughs> that's quite nice uh my could also um, mouse is up there I'm, I'm just going to say you could, you could also chuck in some really weird stuff because you get Gundam and Mecha kits at one to one four four. Yeah, yeah, it's it's big aircraft as well. Oh. There's an awful lot. So I mean, as far as doing something in a scale where it's very accessible, there is all of that stuff out there. Um, trying to find 
realistically scaled planes and the like for 15 mil is harder because it's not a real modeler scale whereas that is so there, there's a lot out there you'll be able to find all of the equipment from a many many companies um and then you'll also be able to find terrain and, and that sort of thing as well and they have a rule set i believe of their own well they, the they, they the name they, escapes me they they have the vitrix games brand which is attached to it so they are going to be working on stuff in the future uh, so. the game's already out for world war ii but yes, i can't I remember can't the name because i'm old and fragile <laughs> what the uh, do so frantic googling <laughs> what the dude maybe, maybe it should be dude it. no <laughs> Juice was right. Um, here and eat my marshmallows. Yep. <laughs> anyway. Free. I can't remember. We'll find out. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. We'll, yeah. we'll let you Google it at home. That could be our Christmas present to you. Oh, there you go. Lovely. Where are we going to next then, Free? Well, there is a female-led group of brutality on Raging Heroes at the minute. So they're expanding their Dark Elves range. Um, so there's nine new products in total. So whether you want to look for a bundle or the odd mini here and there just to bolster up your Eldar. There is some dark elf women ready to deploy on Raging Hero. So when I do say Raging Heroes, don't worry, I'm not talking about 3D printing yet. Um, these are real. <laughs> yeah, these are real ones. These are resin cast, highly detailed miniatures, and they're in their store now. So looking at the individual model releases, you've got the new uh, Lady Dark Chris, um, who... Have you found Lady Dark Chris? Lady Dark Chris is uh, slightly upscaled. So Lady Dark Chris was there before. She's been upscaled mm-hmm. to 36 mil. Uh, the previous one, I think, was scaled at 30. Um, but you can still get her on the uh, 30 mil base. Mm-hmm. She's just got a bit bigger. Um, you've got Crash, the Dark Ranger. Uh, Fearless Berserker. Ridiculous control to put in her place. Absolute strong warrior. You've got Crash, the Dark Ranger. As well as that, you've got Sankuri, an Arc Sorceress. She's They've all taken uh, clothing powerful. tips from Boris. That's they have, <laughs> I know. Minimum. Very, very sexy ladies. Very, very sexy ladies. Um, Boris she's... Johnson dresses like this. <laughs> <laughs> I really do want to see the pictures of that party come no. out. That's how he's got so many children. <laughs> <laughs> dressing like an arc sorceress will do that is. but yeah. she is known to be one of the most powerful sorcerers in the realm you've got vix the master assassin um she has been trained I, I, think she's, I think that's amazing <gasps> she's that. gorgeous isn't it is that like moon you're a huge yeah. fan of the russian standout movie guardians i haven't seen that yet <gasps> actually yeah. oh my god it's it's like x-men meets uh weapon x meets the avengers oh wow okay fair enough Uh, (laughs) it's it's gotta hang on a minute hold the phone we'll just have to please continue yeah please do we have a speedster like the flash who carries those two massive moon blades that form a perfect circle Uh, and he just sort of whizzes through people like a ninja there is a werebear who can convert not all of he doesn't have to totally transform into a bear so sometimes he just transforms the upper half of himself <laughs> into a werebear at which point he has a massive gatling gun that he carries because obviously no, the worst part of the gatling gun is the battery on the back werebears don't care and then there's a, a magneto looking character who can do that but with rocks so he like picks rocks up and then forms oh, rocky great. whips and stuff i it's, feel like i need to see this oh, <laughs> it was on amazon i don't know if it still is i will say the dubbing isn't great um, because I think they ran the script through Google Translate. No, I yeah. translate Christmas literally from me to you. Yeah. Uh, so don't be expecting high art here. Uh, <laughs> but if you do want to see a werebear carrying a Gatling gun, then that's the film for you. Yeah. And obviously, speeds the ninja with those swords. Mm-hmm. She's gorgeous, though, Vix. Vix mm. is absolutely stunning. But if you did want one androgynous male, Mm-hmm. As a dark elf, there is one in this release um, with Yarkil Drith. Uh, he's house captain, he's viciously skilled warrior, and he can schmooze his way through the battlefield with both his high charisma and skill. But if you did want some extra units as well, there's mm-hmm. some Hellions available too on the website, on the Raging Heroes website. I didn't add it in the article. Um, mm-hmm. So you get five units within the box. So it's a defense line that's going to be waiting overhead. But if you did want more than one of the minis as well, there's some serious packs available too. Mm-hmm. So you can get the Queen's Courtier box containing uh, Queen Malferia, the new Lady Dacris, Dark Chris, Dark Chris, Sankuri, Crash, 
and VIX. You can get the Commander's Assault Pack. So it's got three different variations of purchase if you do want to get into it. So it's got three different bundles that are tailored to you. And you've got the Kneel Before the Queen Pack um, <laughs> with Yarkil, Vix, Hellions, and some customization if you do want to add it to your basket. So they are really cool. They're perfect for bolstering up Eldor armies. Absolutely perfect. So if they're tickling your fancy, do head over to Raging Heroes because there are a ton of special discounts as well on the new release. Uh, bigger the bundle, bigger the discount. So if you do like the ideas of them, do make sure you hit the them. Naga. Yeah. Naga are really nice. I was just looking mm. at those. What's quite good about a lot of this stuff as well is that you'll find that Raging Heroes, have, as you were saying, free have come back and revisited some of the older models. Yeah. So they tend to look back at stuff they've done maybe two, three years ago, and then they sort of, as you say, upscale things and change the proportions, mainly so it will match in with a lot of the sort of mm -hmm. games like Age of Sigma and that kind of thing. But it means that they will work really nicely as sort of like slip-ins for anyone building an army of Marathi's finest or something. Absolutely. So, yeah, very cool. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's what I would do if I was building them. Because <laughs> why not? Yeah. I mean, they're very weppy, the weppies. Mm. Uh, staying with fantasy but uh, moving to something a little bit different. If you want some fun, you should have Undead. And <laughs> they're adding them to uh, the world of Yay! Aye! <laughs> However it's pronounced, it's just a collection of vowels. Uh, but it's, par me? <laughs> it's, it's Parabellum for Conquest. Yeah. Um, yeah. They are the Old Dominion. And they did a bit of a preview show um, to round out the year right. and showed off a few of these things. So as far as we know, or what we know so far, is that they're coming out from February and running through to about May, uh, assuming releases are still on schedule. Who knows what will be like, you know, maybe people will have stolen all the containers again. Um, and it's starting off with things like the jewel kits, the characters, and the bone golems. Uh, Interesting faction, as far as undead go. They're, so like undead Roman, is it? Is that the kind of vibe? That's that's the vibe. There's another mm -hmm. set which aren't shown here. I might be able to find them in that video if I can remember roughly when it was. But essentially you've got um, three sub-factions within the, the, the force of the army. Right. You've got the Dark Creed, which were like priests, mm -hmm. um, which are these, so the Keras and the Morai um who kind of step into the dark flame uh, and sacrifice themselves self-immolate at the end of their lives if they don't think they're going to achieve immortality properly wow. uh, and they come back to these sort of wraith white type things oh, with yes. not all of their their sanity still intact um, there's the legionnaire itself which is the very heavily romanized um Oh. Then you also have the fallen pantheon, so they're, they're literally their gods and sort of heavenly host didn't quite survive and and fell to the world of yai. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that is the name of the world. Stop it. Some good things about this though is those old dominion are going to be fairly consistently plastic. Very cool. Uh, the golems were going to be resin, but they've decided to do those as hard plastic. The wow. characters are hard plastic. Oh. Uh, well, I guess, I guess they, managed, they managed to do the, the, the dinosaur, didn't they? Yes. In yes, plastic, they so they yeah, now yeah, know yeah, how yeah. to do big kits in this style. So, mm. so. Might they, be seeing more and more. Yeah, but the change of the change of characters from um, resins to plastic, that Stratagos is, I think, a early alternate sculpt. He will be resin. There will be a standard plastic Stratagos. Right afterwards ah. but in the same way they did with the wadrun and had the scion with the alternate pose mm -hmm. same sort of thing if you pre-order you'll be able to get him although pre-orders aren't open yet uh i will see if i can find the legionnaires because that was quite good if i chuck to there oh man spot on stop you got that straight away that's amazing that, that is <laughs> 16 minutes in um okay <laughs> so you can see the legionnaires is another jewel kit like the dark creed priesthood uh you'll be able to have your praetorians with a uh, sort of board or with uh some form of spear or they could be slightly ranged like the javelin men are for the wadrun because they are pila after all and you can mm. see the old dominion mm. kiliarch uh as well so different style of army um, sure. it's it's not a horde army either which you generally tend to see with undead but at the same time it's not super elite they've got a weird resource mechanic 
built in for the Old Dominion where as they die or as figures are killed, the energy from their sort of soul escaping is redistributed. So you get oh, the tokens okay. that you can then pay out into the, the various sort of, you know, Old Dominion or um, Fallen Pantheon, or Dark Creator, or Legion. And that means the surviving ones get better and remember more of their past life. It's it's like yeah. it's like when they're all there as a mass, they're kind of like a, an amorphous blob, but as less of them remain, they have more power brought into them That's and cool. remember more and become That's more really effective. So, interesting because Conquest is already a resourcey, planny type game where you have the the card deck where your like my my dream cards are here, where you choose the order of activation at the start of a turn so you know i want these to activate first because they have to do something and then hope that your opponent isn't going to interrupt your plans so you've already got that mechanic uh, to a certain extent in some places the old dominion then adds another play style on top of that so the armies all play very individually which is, mm-hmm. is fascinating um especially with the the changes have made to the rules there'll be more of that uh, i want to say february we're going to do the Path of Conquest for the Wadron um, from January. And then at the end, there's some videos with myself and Leo talking about the previous armies. But essentially, all the armies will have kind of multiple sub factiony ways to construct them nice. uh, to a greater or yeah. lesser That's extent. But yeah. So yeah. fascinating to see what else they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think. Yeah. I think 2022 is mostly going to be Old Dominion, and then there's some other big things. In fact, if you watch that video, and if you're interested in the Path of Conquest, you should watch that video. Uh, there's a massive dinosaur-like monster with two massive cannons strapped to it. Oh, Wag <laughs> home. Um, yeah, there's there's something for a whole bunch of the different factions. Yeah. Uh, even if it's just a couple of individual character releases, they've got some little things yeah, planned for everyone. Oh, that's nice. Uh, yeah. They've also said that everything now has been everything they had planned with it has been released with the exception of the the crimson oh, i can't remember who they are it's a hundred kingdoms night faction and that had all been sort of tooled and, and sculpted in the old style before the the nords then came out and then the wadrun is the the way they're going to be going forward so the earlier kits um, people had issues with them. I certainly had issues with the sprue gates on the old kits. They were like the size of tree trunks. But the new stuff, everything from this point on is all sculpted and tooled in the new style. Um, the so wide are amazing. So, yeah. That's, hopefully, it'll be a lot easier yeah. for people to get into it. And we'll see a lot more of these interesting, especially as they push more stuff to plastics as well. Very it'll, nice. It'll yeah. really develop and, and expand it. So, I want to see where Ooh. they go next. Uh, I also need to paint the wide <laughs> Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> but um, next up, we have some more historical. Ooh, mm, ooh indeed. Uh, interesting thing about this is not necessarily new kits, um, but new starter armies. So uh, existing kits have been repackaged by Warlord Games for Zulu and the Zulu Wars. And they've gone up for pre-order. So there's a British starter army and a Zulu starter army. Mm -hmm. um, Both of which come with a substantial amount of troops. Obviously, you can use it for Black Powder, uh, the Anglo-Zulu War. I have that book somewhere. It's got quite nice information in it. Um, If you want to play out your sort of invasion of Zululand, you can do this thing. If you want to play out maybe a more small scale skirmish defending a drift a mission station you can do that as well the british box set comes with uh, 60 british and a set of 20 uh, natal native contingent um which means you can you know have your native bearers you also get a model so major henry spaulding is available there for people who are unaware major spaulding he didn't leave the drift. I will say that. He wasn't so he, there. <laughs> he wasn't there. You know that great bit in the in the film where Chard and Bromhead go, what's the date of your commission? Oh, it's 1792 February. Well, I can't remember the dates. But anyway, one of them says February and one of them says April. And it's like, oh, I'm in charge. No. <laughs> Spalding left and went, you're in charge. 
Chard knew he was in charge. There was no argument over that. So said, you're senior, you're in charge, I'll be back. Uh, he went to look for a missing relief column that should have been coming up. Uh, and that was a long time before they knew Chelmsford had wandered into the middle of a, a bloody battle at Isantuana. So yeah, uh, nice to see him there. Different, mm. certainly. He did go on uh, and kicked around for some time uh, during the Zulu War, but it wasn't like he wandered off and then was sent home in disgrace. So don't worry about it. You can get your major Henry Spaulding or just another British officer if needs be. Um, just apart paint from, his hair differently. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, we, just paint, paint the facings differently, get rid yeah. of those green facings and change that, and they can be for another, <laughs> another unit. Uh, also, Zulu starter army. Mm-hmm. And this one contains... Very nice. 40 married, 40 unmarried. As Warren Carol. is always asking. <laughs> <laughs> where where are, the, are the unmarried there? <laughs> well, those ones are unmarried. Uh, you can tell that by all the beautiful plumage. They're like the Norwegian blue. <laughs> but in Zululand, uh, these are the married at the back. Uh, but yeah, so you get 40 of each type. Nice. And then you also get uh, double as double as a money, something like that. It's Kechwe. Double Amanzi Kambande. Sure. Kambande. It's Kechwe's yeah. um, brother, essentially. So nice. when uh, the Zulu king, Kechwe, decided to defend his land, this guy was in charge. He was in charge of the reserve, and it's the reserve that attacked Brooks Drift. Um, I think the so, miniature for him is amazing. It's a really it's nice bit of detail in that, in that yeah. face. is fantastic. Yeah. He's also doing that bit for, that is from the film where he's doing the spear signal hmm. for the units to attack, uh, which is nice, because then you can replay your Rooks Drift. You just have your uh, prints appear on the hill at some point and start counting the guns. And the anniversary of it's not too far away. There so. you go. Correct. Uh, four weeks. In <laughs> yeah. fact, 22nd, 23rd of January, 1879. So two new boxes uh, for people who are possibly interested in getting into some uh, British colonial warfare in Zululand, uh, or mm-hmm. potentially after the Zulu Wars, uh, if you fancy using the Zulus and British on the... Uh, oh, something else. Yeah. ...same side. <laughs> that. Because the uh, Zulu factions kind of kicked off and then they were supported by the Boer as well. So there were ongoing fights in Zululand afterwards. Never really settled down particularly well. Um, after well, we the went British somewhere invasion. and the war didn't, the war didn't yeah. settle down. Who yeah, yeah. would have thought it? <laughs> we, we arrived, we attacked the savages, and then for some reason the savages didn't knuckle down. And mm. everything went terribly wrong. Yeah. Oh, no. What a shame. Never mind. Carry on. What are we talking about? <laughs> Pe- 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 every, war, war, I think. every war <laughs> all of the wars Sean I'll, I'll Murray put that out best when he goes name a country and I'll tell you when we beat them <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's well worth watching that yeah. so uh, moving away from distraction and into building <gasps> we are going from into the past or I suppose to mm. into the future Although, so the doors of Area 51 have opened So players can get their hands on a paranormal spacecraft and shape a cube with great in the games. So in a new board game called Area 51, the cube. So as you all know, you need to have top level clearance to be busy and working in Area 51. So working as specialists, two to four players are going to collaborate on tweaking a ship with the hopes of engaging in new technology. So although the game is competitive in some senses, there needs to be a winner. So each player is going to take the role of a departmental head, gaining control over the future of the product. So players must reconfigure the tiles, manipulate the machine in their own way to grasp complete control over the ship. So whoever controls the queue will be crowned the winner and promoted by the end of the game to captain in their successes. So hopefully with news to go and fly out and use the ship. So the game can take about roughly 45 minutes to play through, but uh, it's ready for release very, very soon at the start of 22 on January the 27th. So it looks like a lot of uh, fun to play through. It's not too heavy, not too, and as I said, it's two to four players, so Mm. you can get quite a few around the table playing as well. But I do like the idea that it's not so stabby stabby all the time. You are collaborative with working together to build together to eventually still. Say that. 
But <laughs> see, especially this picture where it's in that sort of hangar. Yeah. There was a film came out called Cube. It may even have been one of many. Uh, and and every sort of section within the cube was a terrible, deadly puzzle that the people had to try and escape out of. And when they finally got out, they were in a big hangar like that. Oh. And it was all very white, pristine. Well, the aliens and, and planned it, all along. And even more <laughs> creepy. So I'm just saying, you know. I, I really like the art style to this. I think the art style The art style's really and, nice. And the way that that board is, well, the board is laid out in that kind of <laughs> semi sort of 3D. 3D, but not. <laughs> it's freaking with me. It's messing yeah. with my head, man. Is yeah. it going round corners? Is it not? Who knows? It looks really cool. I really like the idea. I like the 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 sort of mechanics of that kind of playing around with the tiles mm. and yep. you know, organising in certain ways to get the best advantage out of them. I think that's really neat. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it'll be, be fun to see how this one actually plays. Looks sure. really fun. Yeah. Hopefully you want to check that out at some events next year. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. What is our last bit of news for this week slash this year? Oh, yeah. So the last bit of news is something that – Made everyone very sad, really, towards <laughs> the end of last year, I guess. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess. Uh, and that is that Warhammer Quest Cursed City, yes, I'm talking about it now, <laughs> is returning to the tabletop in 2022. So Games Workshop have finally sorted out all of their, no doubt, annoying <laughs> shipping things, <laughs> shipping problems, maybe to do with cardboard, perhaps, coming all the way from the other side of the world and uh, are going to be re-releasing uh, the Cursed City in 2022 uh, for everyone to get their hands on. So if you missed out the first time, have no fear. You can get your own copy and have fun with it and dive into uh, a game of hunting down Radicari's minions mm-hmm. throughout the streets of Ulfcom. I have played it a grand total of three times <laughs> since Eight. I got it, nice. so, which is better than I thought. Hurrah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I generally really enjoyed it. Uh, I think if if you like sort of like dungeon crawly style things, and you like the slightly more sort of open nature of things, mm-hmm. you, not so granular to, uh, side of things from the, the games I put forth in their board games, and I think you'll really enjoy this. If you liked Blackstone Fortress, for example, I think you're probably quite fine. So this there. is this is just a straight reprint. Yes, it's not not anything yeah. special or clever. So, you. Yeah, so just to calm everybody's nerves because people got very. <laughs> excited i'll say on social media mm-hmm. when they said that there is expansion content coming they didn't mean it's coming in the main game nah. they mean they're going to re-release curse city so don't worry if you right. bought it the first time like me you still have the same game <laughs> they are then going to create expansion packs for it like they did with blackstone fortress for you to go and pick up uh, i would imagine this is probably going to go under their their sort of we will make as many as you order things hopefully now i guess yeah. uh but then we'll see how what happens with the expansions in the future i would imagine that a, a fair few characters that we saw pop up as part of the soul blight grave lords hmm. might end up getting put into this as expansion characters it's true like for example a lot of vampires and stuff yeah a lot of vampires they had radukar the sort of like big beast version of him mm. uh, that I'm uh, I'm sure is going to show up in some form as well. Maybe we'll even see the Vendents in there as well, which are the vampire hunters they released yeah. shortly after that. Father Because they daughter. seem like, yeah, yeah, they seem like they are primed to be characters to include in the, the Cursed City. Mm. Yeah, when, when you put it like that, it does seem like they were sitting on the sculpts. It was like, oh. We need to do something else with these yeah, now. <laughs> we can't do any, can't get yeah. the expansions out, can't keep the core game on the shelf, so we better do that. If it is like Blackstone, though, I do remember the expansions, while they didn't say the expansions were limited, they really were. They yeah, had very hard to get life. held off. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. But, when uh, they do start yeah. appearing, if you do already have the game, you should probably look at getting those sooner rather than later. Especially if, like me, you've played it at least three times. Three times. Oh, yeah. That well, must you mean did. you like it, right? So. You did a fair bit of painting on that, didn't you, Ben? I did. I could the go. entire box. So I needed to at least play it a couple of times. There you if go. it makes you feel any better, you're coming very close to having played Curse City as many times as I've played Rook's Drift. Because <laughs> I've managed four times. Well, there we go. So, yeah. And again, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, some, some some fun stuff there from Games Workshop. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, well, I say fun. Depends on your definition of it, I guess. But <laughs> some, some neat stuff there from uh, Games Workshop for 2022. If you missed out on it the first time, do not worry. It will be back. Oh, so, yeah. mm-hmm. And we shall be back with some 3D printing 
and Kickstarters right after this break. Okay, and we're back. And this week, Free, you've picked our 3D print. I have. It's almost like someone has got themselves a 3D printer. It's almost as <laughs> if I've and now they're on the they're on the yeah. one, they're on the bandwagon. Yeah. It's someone almost as if listen to my advice. No, <laughs> listen to my advice at all and say no, don't do that yet. No, don't do it. Yeah, you have. It's all right. Yeah. Well, it's almost as if I've been spending time on my mini factory to look for stuff to three D print for myself. You know, um, but I have come across loads, loads, and loads, and loads of stores which I can't seem to pull myself off of. Um, and one in particular that I found was a uh, crippled god foundry. His foundries. Um, and cool name as well. <laughs> Crippled God Foundry, and they have got some really, really cool stuff. So not only are they on my mini factory, they are on. Well, they've got the, they've got something up on Tribes at the minute, and they are on Patreon as well. And there is a wealth of good stuff mm. within the store. So whether you're looking for uh, a nice set of uh, miniatures that's kind of inspired by the Witcher, there's loads of Witcher monsters there, loads of kind of a vampire hunter equivalent terrain. There are loads. So yeah, let's have a look. What, what are the standout, or what were what ones drew you into this? Oh, well, the thing is, is I started looking. I, I it was the Witcher minis, the miniatures because I had a particular lesson there <laughs> that I actually preferred the style of. Um, but they're just fascinating. I haven't in particular seen stuff like this. It's all very oh, quite Sharon. dark and Sharon. Oh classic Sharon but there's a uh, the terrain specifically and the really and the vampire hunters uh, were what draw me towards the campaign um but there's loads of bits of scatter and I think a lot of this stuff would fit perfectly in some kind of witcher universe uh, but that uh went to go is beautiful mm. well they're stunning but there's uh lessons and witch hunters and many a different cute and cuddly thing as well as dark and gritty I want to see the lesson because, of, you know, Witcher season two mm. is a lesson and it's like, oh, I need to check that out. <laughs> but they really nice. Really, it does really look straight from Witcher, doesn't it, at the moment? Mm. And given, uh, as you said, season Hence two Hence the Witcher. name Monster, Hun- Monster Hunters. Uh, yeah, Monster Hunters, so. not yeah. in a similar font to the Witcher at all. <laughs> Certainly nothing to do with the franchise. Um, but the armour, the weapons specifically, uh, they were really unique. Um, What's a and Leshen and where will I find one? Leshen, it should have been on the first page. but Could be. I, w- I could be looking right at it and I wouldn't know what it is. But Probably I on page two at this there. point. Might be. That's, that's all the Necron Necronomicon. Unless it's so, gone. So. Okay. But, so. but there, there's your hag, your... There you go. Are Where you, is the you lesson? Your griffin. There's your griffin. <laughs> are you a lesson? It's around yeah. somewhere, <laughs> Jerry. I, I honestly, there I, is a lesson. I don't know what you're talking about. I watched you know 10 what? minutes of the Witcher TV show and turned off because it was hot garbage. Well, the, the games okay. are better. The books are great. Uh, the, uh, but these are books. all... Griffin. Um, there is a lesson in here somewhere. I have seen a lesson. <laughs> I have maybe, that maybe, or I've... Maybe we'll stumble we on the lesson. We will but... probably find the one. Yeah, there aren't lessons then. That's not a pack no, they're of lessons. That's a general werewolf from uh, the Witcher okay. universe. But yeah, take a look through, see if there's anything, and I'm sure we will stumble across the lesson if it is around. But the, the um, I loved the terrain specifically, the scatter and the, the little houses. So I've been looking, as I said, um, I've been looking at a moonstone board uh, gaming table at the moment diorama equivalent and uh as you know whimsy dark and gritty they mm. fit in perfectly so there was really nice stuff in here loads of little uh, i'm going to be looking at doing kind of a swamp equivalent uh on my table so this stuff really did stand out for me because it just fits perfectly in a beaten up old swamp but so you can uh, see some of the you see some of the characters from moonstone coming out of a mm swampy location like that which is what because hmm. that's what you're aiming for with the board isn't it kind of yes. moonstone stuff so yes so, yeah. definitely yeah. So it's um it's this this shop was just Ooh. gorgeous to explore it really really was wow. because not only do you have fun to <laughs> say there's loads of different campaigns that are running I love, well. I love how a lot of the 3d printing guys are, are advertising their stuff now they're like adding light effects and color and stuff to it i, I think raging heroes is the first one i'd seen when they were doing their 3D renders and texturing them and stuff. And like, I love seeing this stuff because it gives you that sense of 
what you can do with it or what kind of aspirational isn't it yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's aspirational without giving you a paint job by angle heraldas <laughs> <laughs> there is that yeah that's really cool Good. i like that mm-hmm. Is this a lesson? Oh, it's not a lesson. That's a dragon. <laughs> Should it be better or small? Is... Does lessons have wings? This is this is going to be the point where we don't find the, the lesson. This is where the lesson is gone. I've never even heard of one. You've so never I'm, heard I'm, of a lesson? It's a tree person. It's kind of. like a... All right, it's an ant. Is that what we're looking for? No, it's the equivalent. It looks like the Wendigo, really, that we saw in oh, the beginning. Right, okay. um, but there's horns and they're huge and lanky equivalent. That, that reminds me of the villain from, was it the Dungeons and Dragons TV show? Mm-hmm. The, like the kids show? It kind of reminds me of that guy, the, the guy in the back there. Venger. Yes. <laughs> Although he had the horse, didn't he? Was he had a black, horse. Black winged horse. Uh, but he did have a single uh, horn on his helmet. Mm-hmm. A that symmetrical horn. I love that. That's, That's really nice. cool. That's gorgeous. Yeah. It says that a lot of all this stuff comes pre-supported, I think, doesn't it, with a lot of this? Is it? Yep, there's quite a lot of it's pre-supported as well as that, is if you're not particularly, um, if you do like the look of a lot of these as well, uh, there is a store um, for Cripple Cobb Foundry as mm. well online. So you don't need to 3D print them, even though they do have access to them. You can head over onto their store and get them sent over to yourself. I know it's not the whole selection, but there is a quite a lot if you do not have access to a 3D lesson? printer. Not lesson, <laughs> sadly, no. No lesson. Look at the shop. You need, to, you need to brush up on the Scandinavian folklore, Jerry, and go find out what a lesson is because we're clearly not going to find one. I've, I've, <laughs> I've witnessed <laughs> dreams of a lesson, but it was probably the Wendigo it, that looks like it? a lesson. That's <laughs> where it's being, that's that's cool. Cool. it's knocking over the top of the... Uh, the that's terrace. very nice. Was it the pirate ship you were looking at? John, yeah, I seen so, yeah. I seen the pirate ship and I was like, Ooh. <sighs> yeah, look at that bottom left, big haunted galleon. Oh, that's gorgeous! Wow, lesson. <laughs> Everything is a lesson. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Oh. The big mouth at the front. That's beautiful. Yeah. Real undead army. Stop the flying Dutchman from the Caribbean. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> totally not, not the not the flying Dutchman. <laughs> It's got that's mouths a, everywhere. It's got mouths, yeah. 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 Oh, nice. That's not going to be seaworthy, surely. How, how else does your ship drink, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> to drink seawater. Got to stay hydrated. Yeah. <laughs> End up. That's really nice. I like that. It's Super very, Ill. very cool. Looks Would you do rigging that. on that one, Jerry? No. No, no, no. rigging. I need ship. No, <laughs> no ships need rigging. Fashion? <laughs> <laughs> no lesson. I'm afraid there's a uh, no. We'll be lashing you to the uh, 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 to the yard arm and <laughs> oh, Kraken's oh, nice. No. Mm. The Kraken's beautiful. It's unusual like maw on it as well. That is very unique. That's Almost like, like a, a Venus flight. Track. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's nice. Like yeah. yeah. If you do download them, if you do not want them supported, I do know that they do most of them or all of them supported and some of them unsupported as well. I do know that you have your options. Mm. Uh, it, on what you download. So it looks like that, uh, I would assume this is the case anyway, a lot of their stuff is collected into these bundles that they've done previously on Patreon and that kind of thing and then ports over to the My Mini Factory. So, yeah. so you, if you miss out on something on Patreon, then the likelihood that you're about to pick something up later on down the line in this fashion if you wanted to which is quite nice um but you also see and it's a nice thing that i think we've looked at when we've seen basically any of the 3d printing stuff we looked at this year whenever you see companies like this who've been doing it for a little while you mm. see the progression in their sculpting style sure. so you can see that while these aren't necessarily bad ah. by any stretch of the imagination these compared to some of the more modern stuff that's been sculpted i think you can see there's a big there's a progression uh, towards a lot more detail and stuff as people have become more sort of in tune with how they want to do things in their particular style and sort of getting used to the mechanics of the, the programs they're using and that kind of stuff as well. But like everyone cool. needs a mammoth. Everyone needs so a mammoth. I, like that, really mammoth. I love that this range is called Road of Madness and it just makes me feel like it's Mad Max fantasy <laughs> ancients. You know? That would be cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Every what a lovely morn. <laughs> <laughs> this is the... Um... The website board. there. Yes, you can what head over to the website. They've got loads of different stuff on the website. So as well as the miniatures, you can get hold of your terrain and uh, different bits of scatter as well. So um, 
really, 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 really interesting to see someone who's over on a 3D printing offered them elsewhere yeah. uh, for people that can't get hold of it as well. So there is a bit 3D of it. Just brings us back to there. But what's the resin do? Are we limited oh. in resins? Ooh. Ah. Oh, Quite a few of the monsters in particular. Scale. That's nice. Yeah. Ooh. Eight pages. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry's now going to buy these. <laughs> like, what do we have a look? You know, those those undead that Jerry that's was talking about building. Gorgeous. So, that's really nice. Yeah, mm. that's lovely. That would be ideal for a game like Silver Bayonet. It would. That would be ideal for a game like Silver Bayonet. You are here to have stepped into my garden, so <laughs> Oh, good old Count Orlock, everybody's <laughs> favourite Count. I love this guy. He's cool. Ambrosio Anacleto, mm. the legendary swashbuckler. Your heart will stop either by his gorgeous looks or <laughs> excellent swordplay. Stunning. <laughs> He's very good. He's still my beating heart. That can be arranged. Just a big top hat away from being Solomon Cain. Yes, I yes. Yeah. very close. If you painted him, if painted him up all grim, then he'd look exactly like Solomon Kane from the beginning of the movie. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, because he's got the covered uh, in blood and sweat, and got stuff. the little yeah. evil mustache. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. knew he was evil. Mm-hmm. Of course, all about the facial hair. And her but, ever living sorceress. I like that. Oh, she's floaty. Mm. Floaty. Very, very cool. Cool. Lesson? Ever living. <laughs> no lesson. Shame, shame. Anyway, you know, yeah. I, I really want this to become a meme of just different <laughs> images, and lesson. then Jerry going lesson. <laughs> yeah, that's what it will become every yeah. time we go on to three D printer. Now, have they got a lesson? It's, it's what everybody's asking these days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, With that ambiguous. But their no. one to go did oh. look very much like a lesson, so it's probably the one to go. <laughs> Yeah, oh, they're very nice. Sculpted bases as well, I think, isn't it? As well, yeah, it looks uh, like, custom yeah. bases. Yeah. yeah, they do terrain tiles as well. Mm-hmm. For your dungeon delving, there is indeed. Mm. Mm. Which is handy if you don't have a three D printer, you can just yeah. buy it all. Buy Reasonably it all. priced as well. Out, they are. Yeah, especially if you're after just a big chunky mm. set of them. I would like everything at once, please. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the all. But okay. that, bases. Do they do, they do outdoors bases? ones as well? Ooh. Rounds where your square bases, <gasps> you failed me. Oh, no. No, no. There are squares on the bases. Yeah. 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 Just by the uh, cavern terrain tiles and, and cut use them those, down. Like Dungeon yep. Saga. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Makes sense. So yeah. Crippled God Foundry then. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Uh, crippledgodfoundry.com and also then uh, my mini factory uh, patreon slash crippled god foundry question mark lesson question mark lesson hashtag where is the lesson right time to round out the show with a couple of kickstarters ben mm. and i see we've got two that have substantial amount of time left to run on them which is handy if people mm. get money yeah. for christmas exactly so uh, if you wanted to dive into something a little bit historical Mm -hmm. then we are exploring something sort of expanding on what piano war games did the first time around Mm -hmm. so the army of Württemberg is returning to the tabletop i'm not sure how how that's the right way to say it but that's the way i'm deciding to say it (laughs) Württemberg uh uh, so this is the price of crowns part two electric boogaloo where we are seeing uh piano war games expanding on what they've done previously by um adding in artillery and cavalry support for the Württemberg army to use in your napoleonic-esque games Mm -hmm. on the tabletop um this is all sort of based around the idea of the force that to be honest i didn't know much about and uh, i believe lucas was like researching this when he first said the first one Mm -hmm. And was like, these guys need an army. Uh, but this is based around a 14,000 odd strong army that marched off into Russia. And as is the case when anyone marches into Russia, it didn't go well. Yeah. Around 400 odd of them came them. back. So, <laughs> so yes, uh, this is an army that um, met a tragic end, but perhaps you can tell a little bit of a different story by adding these into the mix. And uh, as I say, uh, Lucas has been able to sort of like 
come at this from the the, uh, the the viewpoint of I will make everything that you could ever need for playing this army, uh, and then you could even p- potentially even use these beyond that doomed campaign in other battles as well, because yeah. Napoleon himself did comment on the uh, ferocity of the cavalry from the Württembergians. That's what I'm going to say they're called. Uh, <laughs> On the battlefield, um, so yeah, they were part of the Confederation of the Rhine. There we if that's go. Any, so, any easy there we go. <laughs> Rather than just Württembergians, yeah. though. Um, so yes, um, this is a Kickstarter that is based around two different sort of methods of delivery. So you can pick up the miniatures physically, as you can see here. Uh, well, these are all sort of um, uh, sort of first test. Yeah, these are things test like these from his home printer. Yeah, so there may be a couple of things where you see lines and stepping, for example, on these miniatures, but Mm -hmm. that's uh, just show off how they look when they're painted. Because when you actually do buy these, they're going to be available in white metal, which is, oh, lovely, lovely. Um, You can then also pledge for a digital option as well. Mm -hmm. So if you want to print these off, you can do that at the same time. So a little bit of a continuation of our 3D printing is the shiz there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can get these on your 3D printer and, uh, in, and and print off as many as you like to your heart's content. And it's not just the files for the cavalry and the artillery. I believe they're also going to be looking to do stuff for some of the existing uh, miniatures as well. And this was this was really neat too. So they've made the scales, so made the miniatures so they can be printed at different scales. Yeah. Um, so obviously you will lose a little bit of detail uh, going high and low effectively uh, but if you wanted to use them in 15 mil or 20 mil then you've got that option as well which i think is a really nice thing especially with there being a lot more sort of uh 15 20 mil style yeah. games people that are people are playing right now it's not all just stuck in sort of like black powder or whatever at the moment mm. uh, the people are really expanding things there um so if you want to dive in and play something that actually has the, the grand scale of a napoleonic battle oh yeah uh, then you could de- oh, at least on a condensed tabletop anyway, <laughs> not one that's going to take over your entire gaming hall. Um, then it's you can, the issue really. You can, you can you can definitely do that and have fun with it. Um, but yeah, really stunning sculpts once again. Um, the the thing that I really appreciated was the fact that everything had kind of been painted up for this. So yeah. clearly, this is a, very much a labour of love for piano um, yeah. that has really sort of like come to fruition and. With them kind of, I guess, maybe capping things off with the Prince of Crowns 2, the price of Crowns 2, sorry. Uh, I, it'll be really interesting to see what they do next because clearly uh, Lucas has some skill uh, in, the, in the sculpting and uh, yeah. I'd love to see some more stuff. Not necessarily just for Napoleonics. Maybe there's another passion project that takes his fancy and wants to go sure. and have fun with that. So, so They are gorgeous. They are. I really like those. Weirdly, I've been looking at Et Sans Resultat recently for oh. Napoleonic Warfare and Blucher again. So, hmm. Mm, Very nice. Stretch model. goals too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's some really nice things. Where else are we going with the stretch goals? Uh, painting guides and locks nice. for infantry, cavalry, and guards. Brilliant. So hammering along quite happily. Mm-hmm. Oh, and there's a, that's a good shot there showing his 28mm yeah. printed beside Perry's metal and plastic that's the great scaling is an issue sometimes vitrix horses i'm looking at you the figures are fine the vitrix horses are massive mm. uh, like horses jungle. From, from from spain mm. uh, but yeah really yeah. nice stuff that is a stunning okay. section and his first kickstarter was only earlier this year i think it kind of yeah. up it was it was yeah. remarkably um well received especially because it's doing another one of those smaller nations. I mean, most people think Napoleonic War, and whenever they think of the sort of the split of nationalities, they think, well, Germans were against Napoleon. Uh, Germany hadn't been um, unified at that stage, so various people were in various places, hence the the Württemberg um, Confederation marching with Napoleon uh, into Russia. And Yeah, beautiful, beautiful work. Mm -hmm. There is... 16 days left, is that right? 16 days from when you're seeing this, yeah. So yeah, so you go. time to get it. Um, <laughs> you've got plenty of time to get the money out of those Christmas cards and into your bank. <laughs> and on people, to Kickstarter. People still do that, right? That's how, uh... I, that's how I deal with it. So our next Kickstarter. So the world Gloom of Killwolf is <laughs> already huge. So currently it spans across two different games. And it's based on fantasy questing. So players must utilize cards and twists and turns throughout a quest, throughout a journey. So 
by that, they're facing the wrath of the ancient in a tactical power struggle. So the third instalment is on Kickstarter now, and it's got a lovely 14 days, and it's called The Call of Killforth. Um, and it was funded in the first 10 minutes of it being live. So don't you guys worry, it's already funded, it's already done. So the Pretty use of cards, yeah, yeah, the use of cards for me look a little deceiving because when I think of a, a questing journey adventure game, I don't necessarily think of cards. I usually think of cards in combat. But uh, players are going to utilise their wealth of heroes that they get um, and journey off into a new adventure. So you're going to quest off for some loot, rake in rewards of being an established hero in kind of like an RPG mm. and dice rolling combo. So there are dangers on the road throughout the whole story. So you're going to have to venture out into the open world for some combat as well. So as well as that, you're going to have to keep an eye on the time of day, factoring in on the journey. Each location gets affected no matter where you go in the open world. So you're going to uncover new encounters no matter where you go. Friendly uh, NPCs and not so friendly NPCs. Um, and along with a chance to harness uh, upgrading abilities for your character. So the premise of the whole game, you've got 25 days to stop the end of the world approaching by the hands of the ancient. So you've got to work hard to try and gather enough power to approach the incoming threat before it is too late. So the campaign is absolutely huge. As you can see, the Kickstarter campaign is huge. Try not to get too overwhelmed when you're having a look at it. There are several different pledges that you can tap into as well. So you can just get a hold of the new expansion for 22 quid um or you can get absolutely everything which is the brand new miniatures there expansions previous games in the franchise a whole new cohort of content included like kickstarter exclusive playmats and accessories wooden tokens hooray um including uh, everything uh, so the game is set to be released in january 2023 when they're looking at a um fulfilling them and there is only english language versions available at the moment in the works so when i do say that the universe is huge and rich i am not lying there is already more in the works uh, upcoming as well so it is still still growing so it's got 14 days is it 14 days left on the clock or is it 14 minutes? days left from 14 when, when you're seeing this year so. 14 days left on the clock so there's loads of different pledges that you can tap into depending on what you want to pick um, as I said, if you are part of the universe already, you can pick whether you just want a particular expansion and stuff like that. Depends where you want to dip into on the pledges. But it's all looking to be fulfilled in January 2023. So really huge campaign and nice to see an established world but, growing even further. Yeah. I, think, I think is uh, was the, the major selling point of this when people first saw it was that it kind of allowed you to do something that was akin to a role playing game. Mm hmm. And akin to an adventure board game, but without the board yeah, <laughs> and it being something that was so entirely linked towards it, just being a, a role playing thing with a, a, a specific group of friends, mm -hmm. because you can just all dive in and make your heroes and then you just lay out all the cards in front of you and develop it from that point. Mm -hmm. I think it kind of gives it a little bit of a like snappy nature to it i think so you can sort of like set it up give it a go dive in have fun with it and then tell a new story the next time yep. and because of the fact that you've got so many cards in the game every time you're setting up the board it's all going to always well, the board <laughs> it's always going to be very different <laughs> hmm. uh, and you're going to be able to dive in and have a lot of fun with it sort of telling different stories with well with particular characters and changing things around and the different skills you take and all that kind of thing so <laughs> so yeah very cool idea it's <laughs> interesting it's also it can be played just as a standalone. You don't need, yeah. it's not an expansion. Don't need blue man shadows. You don't need the other ones. You can just yeah. pick this up, but they're all compatible. So presumably then you can change yeah. how things um, play out when you're playing or yeah, exactly. expand or shrink it, depending on the amount of time you have to play. Yes. No Quite stretch goals for this it. one. No stretch goals on this one. They know what they want to make and they're going to make it. And, um, and that's going to happen. Solo friendly as well. Yeah. So. Yes, I, one to four players. So I think a lot more that. campaigns should be doing that. Going well, this is what we need to make, and and not have. I th you often often get a false sense of value in Kickstarters. I think because yes. there's there's things that are oh we're going to add this as a stretch goal. You're going right. We're not going to have that anyway. No, I know. Type of, you know, you know the, I feel that some content is cut out 
just so they have stretch goals, whereas yeah. they're very definitely going, here's a, a full game slash continuation of another game yeah. um, and miniatures if you want the miniatures and if not it's going to be standees but it's it's all there it's comprehensive it's complete and uh, you don't have to rely on them hitting uh, I'm going to say fabricated or manufactured stretch goals <laughs> yeah. which is what they are let's face they it to, to actually get the full game you know it's it's there from the start uh, mm -hmm. so long may that last and that about wraps us up for this year uh there's one final thing before we jog on um which is uh, another christmas present or gift uh, and this one came from you so we got these Ta -da! ben's opened his and put his greasy fingers all over i it. mean mine's <laughs> mine's still a lovely lovely little oh, yeah, plastic no, no. We'll, we'll and stuff taking, we'll be taking this out of the box for a little while no. but for 100,000 subs, um, we got those. I'd say thank you very much. Absolutely. Indeed, thank you, you. Especially yeah. for sticking with us, because Lord knows yeah. we're not easy. I'm not. <laughs> I, I can barely stand my own company. I don't know how you... I work working with him every day. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Shocking stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, so that was quite nice to have in 2021. John has one as well, but he, he isn't no one, at home, so he, we, no one told me to yeah. bring John, one. So. John had one until he melted it down and sold yeah. it. So. Used it. Used it for tanks. <laughs> so, oh, you'd be surprised how good a silver button is for uplative armour on an RC tank <laughs> when you're shooting out with a 22. But no, uh, thank you very much. Hopefully 2022 will be a push on year for us anyway, and we'll all see you back then. If you're looking for something to do on St. Stephen's Day. Uh, we will be back for the Cult of Games. So our XLBS show over on tabletop.com. If you are not a cult member, come and join us. Get a 30 day trial. Do it. We're going to be opening some presents and talking some nonsense to see out the year. There may mm. even be another gift in that for you. Rumor has first. it, rumor has it, Lloyd got bikinis for Christmas. Lloyd did get bikinis for Christmas yeah. and he was yeah. very happy with them. <laughs> Otherwise, we will see you on the 14th of January. Enjoy your new year. Eat plenty, drink lots. It's important to stay hydrated. Whiskey counts. And we'll see you then. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on. <laughs>